James Lee was born in New York City, but he attended school at Schenectady Academy near Albany. In his later years, Lee raised the money for a statue of Washington in Union Square. One wealthy New Yorker turned him down, saying that Washington still lived in the hearts of his countrymen. Well, Lee replied, if he is in your heart, he's in a damn tight place. Whenever the members of the Knickerbocker Ball Club discussed baseball pioneers, the name of James Lee was mentioned. William Ladd was particularly struck by Colonel Lee's story that he had often played the same game as a boy. If so, he was among the first to play on a diamond field. When Lee was 17, the Second British War broke out and he enlisted as an ensign in the militia. After unsuccessfully invading Canada and vice versa, the troops were sent to fortify New York City. When opportunities for recreation arose, Ensign Lee and friends like Sergeant Thurlow Weed carried on the ball playing tradition of Henry Dearborn, their commanding general. Baseball had found a home on Manhattan Island. Young men, ex-soldiers and collegians joined in the fun. Charles Haswell, who had attended Columbia, recalled playing in a large hollow next to the battery, while others frequented the new City Hall Park. The youngsters of Lee's generation were the beneficiaries of a technical breakthrough, probably the work of a schoolboy. The ancient art of making rubber balls was forgotten, but experimenter Joseph Priestley discovered that the substance he called India rubber could remove pencil marks from paper. Before long, erasers were a standard school supply, and a new use was soon discovered. Charles Haswell was in on the secret. If a baseball was required, the boy of 1816 found it with a bit of cork, or, if he were singularly fortunate, with some India rubber. Then it was wound with yarn from a raveled stocking, and some feminine member of his family covered it with patches from a soil glove. Rubber-centered balls gave gratifying results. Hitters reached new distances, and fielders needed more room. Heavier round bats made of hardwoods like black walnut and ash came into favor. The post-war passion for ball games provoked an equally passionate response from authorities. Many viewed sports as a public nuisance, easily measured by an increase in broken windows. In 1816, New York towns like Troy and Albany closed their streets to ball players. In Cooperstown, where Thurlow Weed ran a newspaper, Second and West Streets were placed off limit. As it happened, the courthouse was on Second and the town academy was on West. One year later, New York City officially closed its parks, the Battery, City Hall Park, and Bowling Green to ball players. <laughs> 